Hey replay viewers, sorry that you can't leave comments. I hope they fix that eventually. You can always get me at Stacy at StacyMakesSense.com is my email or you can find me at StacyMakesSense.com and use the contact tab. You can still heart it up, which is super cool, especially since I use the Easter egg hashtag again. Or you can share too, if you so desire. I'd appreciate it. No pressure. Hey, Jessica. Hey, guys. How are you doing on this Saturday? I hope you all are doing good. Yes, hashtag Easter egg. I know. I just love that hashtag. Hello, Lisa. I've been telling everybody about you today, Lisa. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, good mo it's not good morning here. It's almost two o'clock here. Laundry day. It's meal planning day here. And this, I know I love the little fridges too. Don't you guys? That was super fun of Periscope to do. I hope other people figure out what the other fun hashtags are. So thank you very much, Kim. Yeah, I know they're super cute. Happy Saturday, guys. How are you guys doing? It is meal planning Saturday here. So, oh, you just got home from Sam's. I need to go to Sam's, but I haven't been. Hi, Liz. I usually meal plan on Saturday because I have the most time to do so. <laughs> the fridges are pretty awesome, aren't they? I have the most time to meal plan on Saturday. Um, and I'm not one of these people that likes to do my meal plan really fast. It's something I actually enjoy, so I like to take my time doing it. And that way I can pick out a few new recipes if I want or... Um, you know, if we're gone, then I can just do it really quick. But if you guys don't follow Amira Martin, she actually has at catch.me slash Amira Martin. You can go there and watch her. Hello, Kathy. Her video on how to meal plan in only five minutes. Okay. So, hi. Good morning. Well, afternoon, Cynthia. Hello, Karen. To, this was actually uh, a requested scope, and so I decided to turn it into a series and not just do uh, one. So I'm going to tackle it. Amira, um, somebody here, I know one of you guys knows Amira. Could you please, hello Raylene, put Amira's um, uh, catch.me page up for me, please, somebody, where you can go there and watch her five-minute meal planning. That's not really my style. I like to, thank you very much. That's not really my style. Um I like to, I'll, for me, a meal plan is a work of art. It's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, um, that's what we're going to talk about today. I had someone request me to talk about meal planning for breakfast. And I find a lot of times, yes, catch.me slash a meal, yes, that's right. And she has a five minute meal planning video and she shows you exactly how she does it and she sets her timer and everything. So, it's super cool. Um, but I feel like most people completely forget about breakfast. Uh, and I mean, if you look up meal planning t uh, tutorials and meal planning sheets and stuff online, most of them don't even have a spot for you to write down breakfast. So we're going to talk about breakfast today. I'm going to tell you guys how I do it. I'll show you my meal plan from last week. I'll give you some of my favorite recipes and a few tips that might help you, um, to be able to better meal plan. Yes, I, I will do a, a whole scope just on lunch. So um, meal planning is, is not just about dinner. Dinner is super important. It's super important, but so is breakfast because a lot of times people just completely forget about it and they end up eating cereal all the time. But cereal is so, cereal is a novelty here. And so if I serve cereal for breakfast, everybody's like, oh, cereal! Is it a holiday? So they're just they're just not used to the cereal thing because mommy makes breakfast every day. So cereal is a cereal is a novelty here where they think they've they think they've hit the lottery. They don't really know how good they have it, do they? They just really they don't know. So here we go. <laughs> Karen, that's my friend Karen, guys. She has an oatmeal problem. I love oatmeal. I have a whole Pinterest board dedicated just to oatmeal. But Karen eats oatmeal every day, and it kind of gets to me. And she put that there on purpose. She put that there on purpose because she knows it gets to me. So, oh, yay, I hope you really enjoy it. I have found that planner to be very, very helpful and free. Can't go wrong with that, really. Okay, so my name is Stacy from StacyMakesSense.com currently. And, guys, can I tell you something? Next Saturday, we're launching Humorous Homemaking. So, I'll just be Stacy at Stacy Makes Sense for another week. 
So did Stacy say planner? Yes, I used to use the planner from the Confident Mom, which doesn't really count, Lisa, because it's all you do is print it out and check it off. You, there's no washi tape or stickers or anything. But as you know, I'm not currently using that planner because I've made routines instead of plans this year. It's okay. You can joke with me. Erica and Mackenzie give me a hard time. I told them I was going to buy some washi tape and they about passed out. So, I don't do my meal plan on something funny. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you. I am kind of fun. I just write it in a little notebook. Okay. So, I've got my day and then breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I just write it out beside it. Okay. I don't use anything. <laughs> Crystal. Crystal is the one who said adult magazine, Cynthia. Okay. It wasn't me. So, and then breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then when the day is over, I check it. So I know that the day is over. Um, I just don't, I don't print out anything. This, this, I mean, it's just a little, just a little dinky notebook here with my initials on it that, and, um, I can show you this to get screenshots if you want to. If not, um, it doesn't really matter. So, <laughs> Erica is going to convert me. I told Erica I would buy a planner if she'd buy a grain meal. So, I'm pretty sure that if you send me a glitter gram, that Barry would come after you. Okay, so I can show it to you guys again. Let me flip it around. I mean, it's just super, super basic. <laughs> I know you are, Erica. Okay, so, uh, this was last week, and I'm already done. So... I know it's hard to get a screenshot when there's comments, but I know she will, Cynthia. I know she will. So that's what I, I made last week. And as you can see, I've still got Saturday, but the beauty of a meal plan is I had pizza down here and I decided today I didn't want to make pizza. So we're going to have something else. So that's that. So, but this is, this was what we had last week. And as you can see, I plan to breakfast every single day. So, there's that. Now, a few quick tips that I have been able to implement that makes breakfast easier for me. For the vast majority, probably 95%, I always cook breakfast the day before. I do not get up in the morning and make breakfast, ever. I don't get up and cook it all, because if I do, do you find, yes, a meal plan, I can tell a difference if I haven't made a budget and how, if I haven't made a meal plan, I spend more grocery budget than if I have made a meal plan because I don't tend to overbuy or buy things that I'm like, why did I buy, why did I buy this? What is red curry paste? I don't even like curry. Why is this in my pantry? So when I make a meal plan, um, I can, you know, stick to my budget a whole lot better. So I plan breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that's what I do. I make breakfast at the same time I'm making dinner, okay? This has been a game changer here for us. So when, I, I don't, I'm not a huge curry fan. I don't even know why I bought, bought that. So when I'm cooking dinner the night before, I'm also making breakfast at the same time. So I'm multitasking. So I'm getting breakfast in and baking it or making it or prepping it at the same time I'm doing dinner. So when I get up in the morning, all I have to do is either reheat it in the toaster oven or serve it as is. And that makes my morning go so much faster. And if I accidentally oversleep or the kids are sick, then I don't have to worry about breakfast because breakfast has already been done. I've already taken care of it. It's, it's made and all I have to do is get it on the, the actual table. So I'm going to go through some of my recipes in just a minute and show them to you guys. But that's my biggest tip. Now, even if the family wants something like omelets, I don't wait and make those in the morning. So the night before, I will, I'm not a big, I love my crock pot. You guys know that, the two cookbook thing. And I, I just, I'm not a huge fan of crock pot breakfast. I always feel like it gets over, I feel like it gets overcooked and that's probably because I go to bed so early. Let's just be honest. And so I end up, I don't get to it in time and it ends up being a hot mess. But I will show you some of those recipes in just a second. If we want omelets or something for breakfast, the night before while I'm cooking dinner, I'll brown the bacon and sausage and chop the veggies and brown, uh, saute the onions and the peppers and just stick them back in the refrigerator and then they're ready to go the next morning and all I have to do is scramble the eggs and 
assemble the omelets right then and I'm not doing all that other prep I've already done it while I was cooking dinner so there's that we do eat a lot of grains and baked goods around here and that's probably what saves my behind because I can cook those I can bake those while I'm making dinner and then the next morning all I have to do is add a protein to it which is usually pretty quick and then I have you know fruit is quick too so I've just put it all together like for example, we eat a ton of muffins here. We are muffin connoisseur. You guys know how I feel about muffins popping out and butter and all that stuff. So I might serve muffins with a side of cheese and a small clementine, and that's what they'll eat for breakfast. So they've got their whole grain and their protein and their fruit all there, and it, all I had to do was take it out of the muffin container. So um, that's how I have been able to make breakfast work here without serving cereal every single morning. And I feel better when I can start uh, butter. I feel better when I can start my day with breakfast. If I don't eat breakfast, I'm a raging lunatic, okay? I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't need breakfast. I just ain't hungry. I actually have a post on the blog with my top favorite 13 muffins. So my favorite muffins of all time, that's on the blog. The 13 best muffin recipes of all time. You could probably even find that if you searched on Pinterest. Um, just that. I have a large Tupperware actually it might be Rubbermaid it's long and skinny and I, it fits exactly 12 muffins do you eat, yes usually um, I might we might eat boiled eggs or we eat a lot of cheese and yogurt usually Greek yogurt because it's higher in protein uh, so I, I buy oodles and oodles and oodles of Greek yogurt so I like the almond butter from Sam's we eat a lot of peanut butter and almond butter and nuts and boiled eggs and cheese and Greek yogurt so Okay, so there's that. That's how I do it. Do you use preservative-free ingredients? Could you elaborate on that just a little bit better? I cook mostly from scratch, so I would probably say yes. Um, have you made? Yes, I have. I don't really like it. <laughs> there are just a few things in, the, in my life I have decided I don't enjoy making that, and so I just don't make it. Uh, yogurt is one of those things I just don't enjoy making. I don't enjoy making tortillas. I don't enjoy making yogurt. Um, can I make a confession right here? I don't like making bone broth either. I do sometimes, but for some reason, bone broth turns me off. So, um, there's that. I do make almost everything else, but like around Thanksgiving and stuff, I will make, um, bone broth just because there's so many bones hanging around, but for the most part. Okay, so there's that. So, um, also in the Bread Baker's cookbook that I tell you guys to get, she has a basic muffin recipe and it, it's just a basic plain muffin and then she has a bunch of variations underneath it, but then you can add whatever you want. I use that recipe all the time because I can whip that up, whip it, whip it good. I can whip it up really fast. And just throw in whatever I've got. If I've got blueberries, then I'm making blueberry muffins. If I've got chocolate chips and peanut butter, it's chocolate chip peanut butter muffin. So that's why I really, really like that basic muffin recipe. I think Jessica Fisher at Good Sheep Eats has a basic muffin recipe as well. Um, I just always use the Bread Baker's Cookbook because that's the one that I always grab. Okay, so let me show you guys. Oh yeah, see breakfast is one of the first things that's easy to change because it's not it's not too elaborate and you guys are adding lots of comments and I don't see what you're talking about but I hope you're talking amongst yourselves. Breakfast is the thing that's easiest to change. Um, yeah, mix and match muffins. It, I think it's pretty similar to the bread baker's idea. I just, I'll, that cookbook stays right there exact in the drawer of my kitchen. It's just always the one that I grab out. And watch this on, okay, so here we go. I have a folder on um, Pinterest that I wanted to show you guys that's actually, here we go, it's actually just full of recipes, so let me show you. Now here is my Facebook page, and if you'll scroll on down, then I've got um, an oatmeal and a breakfast but these are recipes that I have not tried. I, do, I don't know. Somebody's mom right there that just commented to Jamie, if you follow Venison for Dinner, she did a really cool um, 
scope recently on her Instapot. So, her, her Instapot. Now, see, I have this right here. This is my folder. I've been working on it for a couple of years. <laughs> Text, Mom, you're getting ready to see my list. Um, oatmeal is a huge thing here. So, I have this Tried It, Loved It board, and actually, I'm Stacy Makes Sense here. I will be changing, but it still should be the same board. There she is, venison for dinner. So, here we go. I have put in this folder only recipes that we have tried and really liked. If I have tried a recipe and we didn't really like it, it doesn't go in here. Um, so, it's full top to bottom with breakfast, lunch, and dinner just different recipe ideas of things that we've tried and we just really enjoyed. Now, of course, it's gonna vary based on your family, but like right here, sausage and egg grilled cheese. That was awesome. We like these here too. Quichadillas. So, um, so here's this file as a reference. It's a reference for me, but it's a reference for you guys too. So that's just on Pinterest, my main Pinterest board, and it's called Tried It, Loved It. So, that's it right there if anybody wants a screenshot. So, there that is. Doo -doo. So, I'm going to tell you guys a few of my favorite, uh, a few of our favorite recipes. Um, thank you very much. And um, then you can... Uh, screenshot that if you want or I'll tell you where it's from because I've got a pretty hefty stack to show you guys. Hey Stacy from Stacy, that is, these are the recipes that I use over and over and over again. So we do know that we like them and they do get consumed a lot around here. Okay, so I'll, but first let me, before I get started, I just tried a new recipe from this cookbook. It's the best waffle recipe that I have ever put into my mouth. It was it was like one of those where you're like, oh my gosh, this is like, oh. and you just sit there. So, okay, so it's in this cookbook from Jessica Fisher, not your mother's Make Ahead Freezer Cookbook, because I'm working on my freezer meals for the baby, and it's in here. This is probably at your library if you don't have it. I don't have an accent. Okay, anyway, lemon and honey flax waffles. I thought, I wasn't really sure how I felt about it because, you know, I'm not too crazy about lemon, but these waffles were like a mouth explosion. They would make your tongue slap your brains out. They're the best waffle recipe I have ever eaten in my entire life. I'm pregnant with number four. So, these, so if you have this cookbook, please make these because tongue slap brains out, mouth explosion, okay? What grain did I use? It calls for a whole wheat pastry flour and white flour. I just used all soft wheat on those. But these, these are amazing. Amazing. If you guys quit making fun of me, if you don't quit making fun of me, I'm never going to say that on air, Kate. So, okay. So, here are some fun ones. Oops, my stack is all Twitter pated. Here we go. Yes, Raylene, get that one. Okay, first off, we've got chocolate granola. This is my kid's favorite granola recipe. It has a crock pot option, but I always use the oven directions because it's faster. Can I put a screenshot for the book again? Yes. There it is. Okay, this is for Kate because I love Kate. I don't like ice in my drink, okay? So I realize it sounds like a body part that you're not supposed to be putting in your drink and rather sitting on, but yes, I don't like ice in my drink, okay? Okay, this is, like I said, my kid's favorite recipe. The URL down here, it's kind of hard to see, but it's from Practical Stewardship. So, if you were to go, like if you screenshot this and just search Pinterest chocolate granola crock pot option. Now I'm from Virginia. So it is really one, it is a great, great, great cookbook. 
So if you were just to search chocolate granola crock pot option on Pinterest, this would come up. But this is my kids, yes, practical stewardship. This is my kids' favorite granola. I'm not going to lie. They get excited when I make it. It makes the whole house smell amazing. So I make this a lot and try to keep it in stock for them. So, yes, I like my water room temperature too. This one you'll probably have to get a screenshot of because it's one I made up. This is waffle French toast, and anytime I have some bread that's starting to get stale, which doesn't happen really often, um, I make waffle French toast with it. I think waffle French toast tastes better than regular French toast because it gets crunchy, and I like the crunchiness factor. So I just whip this up, and it's also a lot cleaner in your waffle iron. I make this a lot. We really like it. It also freezes well if you make it and let it cool all the way, and then just stick it in a single... Um, and a single layer with wax paper in between each piece. So we eat this a lot. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything. Okay. This is a winner winner chicken dinner. These are mini maple chocolate chip muffins. I have been making these a long time. It's like pancake but made in a mini muffin pan. And my kids, they love these. And it's actually from, right here is the blog. Okay, Bakerella is the name of the blog, and it's the mini maple, but if you search this, it's really popular on Pinterest, so if you searched it, it would just come right up. This is one of my favorite recipes of all time, and if you search <laughs> on my blog, I mention it repeatedly. Would I serve, yes, usually with waffles, we have uh, Greek yogurt and maybe fruit, so um on the weekend, sometimes I get fancy and we have bacon. But I make these a lot. And then they're not very, they're not too sweet. You can eat them plain, but my kids like to dip them in maple syrup. So, yes, I do eat the same thing. I fix the kids. So, um, I make these a whole lot. Okay. Remember, yes, uh, it wasn't yesterday. It was when I was doing the cinnamon rolls. I told you guys that I liked Pioneer Woman's, but that there was another recipe I liked better because it was cheaper with less sugar. This is that recipe. And I like it because it freezes really, really good. So I can cook this all the way. Trader Joe's is the best place to buy maple syrup. Um, Amazon is probably the next best place, but I try to buy at Trader Joe's when I'm out of town and I buy several at one time and keep them in the freezer. So overnight French toast casserole, I like it because it calls for a lot less sugar, like I just said. So I don't feel like I'm eating dessert. I actually feel like I'm eating breakfast. And this recipe is from mommyskitchen.net. So overnight French toast casserole from mommyskitchen.net. For those of you who want a screenshot. Did somebody say something about Trader Joe's? I missed that question. So I cook this all the way. I let it cool completely overnight in the refrigerator and then I can cover it uh, with plastic wrap and foil and it freezes really, really good. Okay. I make this probably once a week. <laughs> No joke. This is baked pancakes from Give Peas a Chance. I like it because it's basic. And so I can add things to it if I want to. I don't have to. Um, it makes an 8x8 eight eight pan. So that feeds us for breakfast. But it doubles really easily. That's really sad really. And we don't have one either. So I have to go when I'm out of town. So um, this one is just plain. Just plain ingredients. And it doubles. And if you double it, I just put it in a 9 by 13 But... I make that my kids love this and it's also a good one that's easy to eat in the car because it's a pancake and you just cut it in squares and if we're going to be eating it in the car I just spread the top with peanut butter. I uh, know Bristol or Kingsport doesn't have a Trader Joe's or a Whole Foods. So I do make this a whole lot. I buy the grade B maple, maple syrup from Trader Joe's. So there's that. Okay. If you've never made breakfast nachos, here's the URL. Whoops. See? Yes, I make all these with my milled flour. Okay? If you've never made breakfast nachos, I'm very sad for you. It's a weekend favorite here, and it's really, really fast. Barry works in Bristol. I didn't know you were that close, Cass. So, um, basically, this is just eggs or anything else that you have um, left over. I like to make these if I have leftover meat of some sort for breakfast, but bacon works too. And so 
you just spread your iron skillet full of tortilla chips and then you put you scramble some eggs and put the scrambled eggs on top and all the um all the toppings on top and just stick it in the oven until the cheese melts my kids adore these and i will not lie barry likes them too so here's the blog url but basically it's just an idea it, it's not even really a recipe no i would not make this the night before this is one of those recipes like i was talking about omelets where I'm, i would probably scramble the eggs the night before and then just use any leftover meat i had so then when i would get up all i'd have to do is put my chips in the bottom of the iron skillet and put my eggs on there cold because they'll warm up in the oven and then um, just my toppings on top and broil it or bake it until it's uh, warm and the cheese is melted. So family likes this. This is actually a recipe from my blog. It's my kids favorite oatmeal. <laughs> Remember my friend Karen who eats oatmeal every day? This is her favorite too. Uh, Jacqueline, I don't usually have to know. And Lisa, why did you say that about Bristol? Now I'm wondering, are, where are you from, Lisa? This is on my blog, stacymakesense.com. It's my kids' favorite oatmeal. It's really, really fast. I can make this in advance, but it's so fast, I don't really have to if I don't want to. It's one of my quick go-to breakfasts when the poop hits the fan in the morning. And yeah, see, there's Karen. This is her favorite recipe. So this is actually what Andy's been sick and hasn't had an appetite, and he woke up and actually asked for this this morning. So... Um, uh, this is really, really super good. Where did you go to school in Bristol? So yes, this is, this is a happy, happy family recipe. This recipe takes a little bit of time, uh, but it's worth it. And I can't remember where it's from, but if you would Google still cut oatmeal with bananas and cobbler topping, it would come right up. I know because I've had to do that before. King College. I used to live five minutes from there until we moved here. So, still cut oatmeal with bananas and cobbler topping. If I was going to make this the night before, I would make this topping and have it ready to go. And then in the morning, all I would have to do is cook the oats quickly, and then my topping would be ready to go. So, my family really likes this. It's just really super yummy. So, that is still cut oatmeal with bananas and cobbler topping. Do I always use rolled oats? I usually do. Um, I do use still cut oats sometimes, but my kids prefer rolled oats, so I don't make the still cut oats as often. I don't like crock pot oatmeal casts, uh, but I do have a couple recipes on the blog if you want to check them out. Crock pot oatmeal usually does good if it's cooked in a water bath. It's less likely to get like the consistency of paste, which is very turny offy to me. This is my favorite. You all were asking about recipes. This is my favorite muffin recipe. See, I've made some um, alterations, but this is Honey Brand Muffins, and it is from the blog Nurse Loves Farmer. That's linked in my favorite muffin recipes of all time, but this is my favorite muffin, like ever. So, Honey Brand Muffins from Nurse Loves Farmer. I make those the night before they reheat. Uh, with these recipes, the muffin recipes are on the blog already. I might scope, I might blog this later, but um, not right now. Mama's Great Breakfast Cake. This is from Heavenly Homemakers. It is awesome. <laughs> Paste oatmeal is not my fave. Mama's Great Breakfast Cake is from Heavenly Homemakers. It is super, 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 super delicious. And we eat it a lot. So super delicious and if this one is really good a lot of my friends like this we just like the flavor but this is dairy and egg free are the recipe no these are not my blog recipes these are ones i found that's why i'm given the opportunity for screenshots these are dairy and egg free but as you can see it says it makes 12 muffins but every time i make it i just get nine maybe that's because i hate dinky muffins go big or go home who wants a little teeny weeny muffin give me a big muffin Okay, and that is from the blog Mother Time. So Mother Time Maple and Brown Sugar Oatmeal Muffins. 
this is this one is on my blog if you follow me on Instagram you saw me post it last Saturday I make this a lot because we all like it and it's really fast so this like the Snickers oatmeal is another one that if I don't make it the night before I can yes on my blog this is what a printable recipe looks like so if you print something from my blog this is what it looks like um, so this is the German pancake, which I also called Dutch Baby, that's on the blog um, that we eat a lot. This probably ranks as berries. One of Barry's favorite meals, breakfast tostadas. I make them any time that I have um, extra taco meat for breakfast. It's kind of like the nachos, except it's going to turn out looking something like this. So it's kind of a messy breakfast, but it's something that comes together super, super fast. So you just use, if you've got leftover taco meat from the night before, um, Big Dutch Babies. And this is from the vlog, The Happy Wives Club. So that's breakfast tostadas from The Happy Wives Club. And this is my last one, okay? I make this probably at least once a week. Sometimes I make it more than once a week because my family loves it so much. So this is my oatmeal, my baked oatmeal recipe that someone was asking about. I make it a lot. So I've got this up on the blog, imprintable. It looks just like this with add-in options, as you can see down at the bottom of different things that we like to add. I make this so often that I don't even need the recipe anymore. <laughs> Oh, yes, I love taquitos. That's a good idea. I make this so often that I don't, like I said, I don't need the recipe for it anymore. And this freeze is really good, too. So you can make this and cool it all the way and cut it into individual servings. Wrap those in plastic wrap and stick them in a Ziploc bag. And it makes, a, it's a really good freezer breakfast as well. So that's my last one. I know that was a lot, so I hope you're not super overwhelmed. And you can go back and watch the replay and grab URLs if you didn't get that the first time. So, um, anyway, that's how we do breakfast here. So, I make breakfast every day. I make it the night before while I'm cooking dinner so that I'm able to multitask and get it done. So, the next morning, all I have to do is heat it up, like I said, because sometimes you wake up sick or sometimes your kids wake up sick and you don't, you haven't made your breakfast and so... Cereal again for everyone. Some of the side items for protein that I usually serve, boiled eggs, which I will boil the night before while I'm cooking dinner. We eat a lot of boiled eggs. Cheese, um, Greek yogurt, peanut butter, almond butter, and nuts. We eat a lot of those as side items for protein in the morning. So we eat a lot of egg sandwiches too. So <laughs> cereal. My kid, like I said, my kids think they've hit the lottery whenever I serve cereal. So that's how to make bread, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My bread machine makes bread so easy for me. It's insane. So, and you guys are putting up these comments about how I'm superwoman or something like that. I'm so not superwoman. All these things are so easy that like if I'm mixing up a meatloaf to make dinner, it's not that hard for me to take out another bowl and just as soon as I put the meatloaf in, start mixing up something else to go. So by the putting my things together and doing them at the same time, I'm multitasking and getting it both done. So in the next morning, I can be lazy. So <laughs> This isn't about being superwoman. This is about so in the morning, I'm not going nutso because my kids wake up and when they come out of their bedroom, the first thing out of their mouth is, what's for breakfast? It's not good morning, mom. It's not, hi mom, nice to see you. It's not, yay, it's another new day. No, it is. What's for breakfast? So if I don't have it ready to go, I'm up Poop Creek without a paddle. And so this is how I've saved my behind and, and so the next time that you think, Stacy's Superwoman, she's cooking all this stuff. I burnt lunch, okay? I burnt lunch for my family. They still ate it because they were hungry. But I burnt lunch. So none of us have it all to put together. We don't all know what we're doing. We're just sharing tips with each other to see what makes it work. This might not work for somebody. Your family may hate breakfast, so you don't even have to make breakfast. So why are you here? <laughs> I'm so kidding. But... So, that's how it works here, and you can still burn lunch. 
and set off the smoke detector. My kids know whenever the smoke detector starts going off, they just go down the hall and shut the bedroom doors to get it to turn off because they're so used to that happening because it happens so often. It's, it's a way of life here. Oh, good. I'm glad you're looking forward to the lunch scope. I think I'm doing that next week, but we'll be back on Monday at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. I'm sorry that I talked for so long. I know I talked a really long time, but that was because I had such a big list of recipes, and so I hope that was not overwhelming. And um, if you can't go back and listen or grab um, a screenshot, just holler at me on Twitter and um, I can send, tell you exactly what that recipe was or where it was from. So on Monday, I'll be back at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time and we're going to talk about the book Large Family Logistics. I was asked to speak about that book. So um, it's one of my very favorite home management books. Oh, someone asked if I had bread machine scoped. Yes, I do at catch.me slash Stacy Makes Sense. I have a four-part video series uh, beginning to end of my bread machine. So, which Bible did you buy? I don't currently remember. Black? <laughs> I bought a black Bible. That's about all I can remember right now because I'm having a brain fart. I said brain fart. So, your library doesn't... I actually purchased large family logistics. The Holy Bible, that's the one I bought. The Holy Bible, it's black. She did not reprint it. She was supposed to reprint in 2015, and it never came out that I saw. So, Crossway, thank you, Erica. It's the ESV Crossway Journaling Bible. See, I knew Erica would come through for me because she's my girl, and she helps me because I've lost my mind. So we're going to talk about that. And if you don't have a large family, don't think, well, I'm not going to listen to that scope because I don't have a large family. Because actually the topic is how large family logistics is good for you no matter what size your family is. So I think the title's a little bit misleading. Um, we're going to talk about that book on Monday, and there will probably be lots of quips about don't you know what causes that, and are they all from the same dad, and stuff like that, because that's fun to me. Can I do, yes, I'll try to do a scope on snacks when I'm done with meals. But that's how you can make breakfast work for you, and you don't have to do it every day. Maybe an improvement for you would just be doing it twice a week. And twice a week's better than nothing. Um, it probably would actually cut back on your bill a little bit because cereal is expensive, guys. Let's be honest. Cereal is super expensive. And it adds up quickly, especially when I serve my kids cereal. They will eat two bowls and ask for more. I usually have to cut them off if I serve cereal. I say, no, we're done now. We're done. So, where did you purchase the book? I purchased my book used from a homeschool mom. But most libraries will have it. Yes, I do have down to make, um, to do a tutorial on how to make biscuits. So, I hope you guys have a good afternoon and that you found that helpful. If you need any, um, if you have any questions or whatever, you can tweet me or send me an email, Stacy at StacyMakesSense.com. And I will be back on Monday. I hope you guys enjoy your day tomorrow. And until then, I will see you. And remember that in the walk of life, even concerning breakfast, it's only too late if you're dead.